What we're trying to remember here is that acceleration has a direction to it. It can be positive or it can be negative, right? And, and I think it's easiest to remember if we think of acceleration as being a push on something, perhaps the wind blowing, the wind could blow in the positive direction or it could blow in the minus direction, okay? All right, first of all, direction, sorry, acceleration, we know is a vector, all right? A vector because it is a change in velocity, okay, over time, right? And so velocity is a vector, and so a change in velocity is also a vector. So acceleration is a, a vector. Now, the direction of this acceleration will depend on how the velocity changes, okay? And if you do the math, the delta V, right, if that delta V is positive, you're accelerating in the positive direction. If that delta V is negative, you're accelerating in the negative direction, okay? Not where you're traveling. This is not the velocity. It's not whether the velocity is changing, going plus or minus. It's the change in velocity, whether it changes it. So you could be going forward and speeding up, okay? That's a delta V, a change in velocity that is positive. I could be full going forward and slowing down, okay? And that would have a delta V of negative. Going forward, slowing down, delta V is negative. Now, the general principle of determining the direction of acceleration is to look at how the velocity is changing. Like I said before, you find that velocity change, right? You look at the final velocity, you subtract the initial velocity, and that's just going to be, um, you know, whether if that's positive, then, then acceleration is positive. If this value is negative, acceleration is negative, okay? It is not speed. Don't think about how the speed is changing. Again, thinking of it as pushing, like the wind blowing. Okay, if the wind is blowing one direction, right, that's, that's positive acceleration. If the wind is blowing the other way, right, that'd be negative acceleration. Okay, so here we go. Here's our example. We're going forward, right, and if it has positive acceleration, the wind is pushing it forward. Right, the wind is pushing it positive. And so it is going it, to, what's it going to do? It's going to speed up, right? So the change in velocity right, is going to be, go up, right, and so it's, you're going to speed up, speed up, okay, now let's say we're going backwards, we're going backwards, but the acceleration is still positive, positive acceleration, both cases, acceleration is positive, so now the wind is blowing this way, same way as before, still in the positive direction, but the car is going the other way, so the car is going to slow down, okay, it's still going to slow down, However, its initial velocity, right, and its final velocity, right, this would be the change in velocity. What happens is the initial velocity might be negative 3, okay, going negative 3. But the wind is blowing against it, right, so it might come to a stop. And you'd have 0 minus a minus 3, which is a positive number, okay. Let's look at that again, all right. You're going one way. The velocity is that way. If you have a positive acceleration, it is going to make uh, the velocity itself go up and up and on up, okay? Positive acceleration against a negative velocity will slow you down. A positive acceleration against a positive velocity will speed you up, okay? So if the signs, you can think of it, if the signs are together, the acceleration and the velocity you're going, you're going to speed up. Right, and if the signs that works as well, if, if acceleration is negative and velocity is negative, you're going to speed up. Okay, if acceleration is one way and velocity is the other way, in other words, I'm going backwards and acceleration is forwards, you're going to slow down. So that's a good handy thing to remember. Okay, so here's the negative side. Right, now it's a negative acceleration, so the wind is blowing to the negative direction. Okay, wind is blowing negative direction, and like we were just saying, okay. If you're moving in a positive direction and you experience negative acceleration, you're going to slow down, right? And if you have negative velocity, negative direction, you're going to speed up, all right? In fact, um, this guy right here could slow down and stop, and then what would happen? If it's still being pushed by the wind, right, it could slow down, stop, and head back the other way, all right? So if we were to do that, so let's think of that. We could actually graph that, right? If we had a graph of this, right? Here is the velocity. We start off going positive, 
velocity graph, and it gets less and less and less, and the wind has knocked us down to zero, and then the wind will, up. Uh, the, there we go. The wind will keep pushing us into the negative direction. This represents the car here going into the wind, slowing down, and then being pushed further and further backwards. This guy right here, right, velocity wise, is already, already uh, going in negative velocity, and it'll just keep going more and more negative. Okay? All right. Newton's first law of motion is basically things that are moving. They keep moving the way they're moving, unless the net force is on them. In other words, if something is stopped, if the velocity is zero, it's going to stay zero. If the velocity is five, it's going to stay five. Okay, so if they're stopped, they're going to stay stopped. If they're at a certain velocity, they're going to keep going that velocity. Okay, so they keep moving unless there's a net force. Now, net force means uh, uh, they don't cancel, that nothing, everything cancels out. Okay, if there's not a net force, there's a leftover. There's leftover force is going to get pushed or pulled, okay? So if your moving object would continue to move if all forces were taken away. That's basically what it is. If all the forces are taken away, it's just going to keep doing what it's doing. That's Newton's first law. Sometimes you've heard objects in motion stay in motion, object at rest, stay at rest. Well, that, this thing combines all that into one. They keep moving however they're moving, whether it's stopped or whatever. Now, if you did not have this, if you had a ball and it was moving along, and you had an unbalanced force, say I start pushing on it that way, it would slow the ball down, right? So Newton's second law says, right, okay, if you apply a force on something, you're going to change its velocity, okay? So if you push on something, its velocity will change, all right, by pushing the extra force, all right? And you could push in the positive direction or the negative direction. Again, if you're pushing positive and the velocity is positive, it'll speed up. If you're pushing negative and the velocity is positive, it'll slow down. Okay? If you're pushing positive and the velocity is negative, it's going to slow down. And if it's traveling negative and you push it negative, it's going to speed up. 